I want to talk a bit about bullying, alcohol, and drug abuse. As everyone knows, these have been issues that we, along with other communities, have been struggling to and trying to deal with for some time. Uh, last week, we pulled together some of our staff from health services, social services, the daycares, the birthing center, Ontario Works, Iroquois Lodge, and long-term care to begin a brainstorming session on how we can develop an action plan to deal with these issues. It was a good session with a lot of feedback from our frontline workers. Our next step is to establish a working group to move this work forward. We will also include representatives from the police, Kanokrisha, and the schools on this working group once the schools get back in session. In the future, we may also look at including community members in the work that we plan to do. Part of our strategy is to continue with motivational speeches to our community from a variety of speakers and role models. We will provide more information on this issue as the work progresses. We all need to remember, however, that this is a community issue that we should all be concerned about. So if anybody out there has any ideas that can help us, please feel free to uh, get in touch with us and provide them. Uh, bridge number 18, which is located on Cayuga Road between 2nd and 3rd line, will be closed for bridge work beginning on Monday, August 11th. 2014 and it will be closed until Friday, October 31st, 2014. Residents may access blue flag numbers 1228 to 1064 on Cayuga Road from the third line only, while those on the other side of the bridge with blue flag numbers 1002 to 811 Cayuga Road may access these residences from second line only. The bus lines and emergency services have been notified of this closure. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Director of Public Works, Michael Montour, at Public Works Office at 519-445-4242. I just want everyone to know, too, that on July 9th, I wrote a letter to Leroy Jock Hill, who is the, con the Secretary to the Confederacy Chiefs, inviting the Confederacy Chiefs to meet with the Chief and the Councillors of the Elected Council as soon as possible in order that we can begin discussions on developing a working relationship for the benefit of our entire community. I spoke to Jock a couple of weeks ago and he said that our request would be discussed at the Confederacy Council that was to be held on Saturday, August 2nd. And speaking with him after that, me, after that date, he informed me that the Council on Saturday, August 2nd was cancelled. The request will probably not be discussed until their next Council meeting, which is scheduled for September 6th as they hold their meetings on the first Saturday of every month. I just wanted everyone to know that we are making strides to try and meet with the Chiefs. Some of the meetings and the speaking engagements I attended since the last update, uh, on July 11th I was in Toronto at the one year countdown for the Pan Am Games. This took part at Nathan Phillips Square at City Hall and uh, Kevin Sandy organized a lot of our athletes, lacrosse players, to go there and do a lacrosse activation when it was, it was one of the best attended activations, uh, activities that were held at that event. On July 18th, I traveled to Washington, D.C. and was a panelist on the Living Earth uh, panel at the uh, Smithsonian Museum of the National, Amer uh, National Museum of the American Indian. Uh, I was on a panel with the Chief uh, Letha Tom, who is a uh, Paiute from Nevada, and from with Rebecca Moore from Google Earth. It was a very well-received uh, presentation, and it was a, a good event. And I want to thank um, the people at Smithsonian, especially Tim Johnson, who extended the invitation to us. On July 23rd, we were so lucky to have the three Nolans here. Uh, Ted Nolan, coach of the Buffalo Sabres. Jordan Nolan, the two-time Stanley Cup winner and a hockey player with the LA Kings and Brandon Nolan, who used to play with the Carolina Hurricanes. They were here and they did a motivational speech at the community hall. There were about 200 people that came out. Most of the time was spent getting their pictures and autographs, but it was a good evening. Uh, we were able to get them because they were conducting a hockey camp in, here in Paris during that same week. At that same event, Colleen Davis and Veronica Rosette, two, two local girls, presented information on dreams and goals workshops that they are hoping to conduct in our community. So watch for their information and, and, and follow up with them. I also attended the uh, close of the Red Barn and then looked at the display of all the crafts that the kids made. And on July 26th and 27th, of course, we had our Grand River Champion of Champions Powwow, which was very well attended on both days. I think it's probably the largest crowd they've ever had. And in later in that week, I attended a community meeting that was sponsored by the Haudenosaunee Trade Collective. Uh, they provided information on the work they are doing with respect to Bill C-10 and the development of our own tobacco law here at Six Nations. I also attended an open house at the Stone Ridge Daycare to celebrate their 10th anniversary. From there, I traveled to Niagara 
Falls, and on August 1st, we went to Fort Niagara in Youngstown, New York, and on uh, August 2nd, we went to Fort George, Niagara on the Lake to celebrate the commemoration of the Treaty of Niagara, which is 250 years uh, commemoration. It was an excellent event. On the Friday night in New York, the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, David Onley, was there. Um, there were presentations made by Rick Hale and Alan Corbier on both days, uh, explaining the different wampum belts. And on the Saturday, on the 2nd, we heard again from Rick and Alan, and David Zimmer, who's the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, was the representative for the Crown. I was the co-chair for that session along with Grand Chief Gordon Peters from the Association of Iroquois and Allied Indians. I want to make special mention and thank you to uh, Rick Kale who uh, did so much work and the other part, people in the Six Nations Legacy Consortium in organizing this event. It was very well done, so our, our gratitude to Rick. Uh, the Skateboard Kids Project Skate Park, their total budget was $260,000 and I understand that they are only $9,000 short. Uh, over the past month, we've took presentations. I took part in photo op presentations where they received um, uh, donations from the Royal Bank, from Wilfrid Laurier University, and from Union Gas. So they're very close to reaching their goal, and um, they hope to have their skate park open next June. So that's something to really look forward to. And I think those kids have done a wonderful job, and they were they're out selling uh, selling and tickets and doing fundraising all over the place. Some of the upcoming events, uh, Woodland Cultural Centre has two exhibits going on. On Friday, I attended the opening of the Kent Monkman Art Exhibit, which, was, which is still on. And then last night, it was a commemoration of uh, the 100 years of the beginning of World War I. And it honoured the veterans that were in that war and presented flags to all of their descendants that were able to be there. They're both excellent exhibits, and if you get the chance, please go up and take a look. Um, the Six Nations pageant, which featured the life of Tom Longo, had just finished this past Saturday. Uh, I went to see it on Saturday night. It was a good show and it was uh, very entertaining. And, but we do need to help the pageant get back up to speed and, and you know, help it. So next year we'll, we'll see what we can do to help them. Tomorrow, August 13th, is our big Try Hugs Not Drugs Day at uh, Chiefswood Parks, beginning at 4. I'll go to that for a while, and then I'm t I've been asked by Phil McCollman, the MP for Brant, to take part in the hockey night in Brantford, which is taking, part at, uh, taking place at the Gretzky Centre tomorrow evening at 6.45. There's also going to be a hockey century tour in uh, Brantford in the afternoon at the Gretzky Centre for anybody that's interested. Mm -hmm. uh, also on Thursday, I've been asked to speak at the swearing-in of um, Justice of the Peace, Audrey Green Summers, who's a member of our community, she's asked me to attend that and uh, say a few words. And I'd be happy to be there because it, you know it's it's good that we get people in those types of positions. Uh, Sherry Maricobo will also be doing a performance of Paddle Song at Chiefswood on August 14th, 16th, and 18th. So I encourage everyone to go out and see that. Next week I will be in Toronto for two days, attending the Political Confederacy of the Chiefs of Ontario. And at the end of next week, we'll be starting with our Six Nations Fall Fair. I think it, uh, Miss Six Nations contest will be on the Thursday, August 21st, and Kids Day is on August 22nd. And the Library Archival Project is having a fundraising golf tournament on August 31st. On September 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I will be traveling to Aquasasne, along with councillors Dave Hill, uh, Carl Hill, and Terry General to attend the second, uh, second border crossing summit that's being hosted by the Mohawk Council of Aquasasne and the Assembly of First Nations. In closing, I just want to say congratulations and acknowledgements to the uh, Iroquois Nationals for winning bronze in the World Lacrosse Tournament, to all the athletes who participated in the North American Indigenous Games, which were held in Regina a few weeks ago, to Carrie Lee Thomas, who is a member of the Team Canada women's fastball team, and to Brandon Montour, who was drafted by the Anaheim Ducks in the National Hockey League. I think we're so proud of all of these people and, you know, I'd really like to acknowledge them when we get the chance. Also, good luck to the Six Nations Arrows as they travel west to try and win the uh, Minto Cup and to the Six Nations Rebels as they travel east to try and win the Founders Cup. And best of luck to the Six Nations Chiefs and the Six Nations Rivermen who are still working their way to the national championships. So that's it for this month. Um, as I say, we, we are a community of champions, so we're going to have to really get out and support our champions, and which is really makes our community as uh, proud and strong as it is. Yawa.